Hey everyone, in this video, I want to talk about Windows Laps, the local administrator password solution. Because all of our Windows machines have this powerful administrator account, which has a password. Well, how do we maintain the health of that password? How do we rotate it? How do we know what it is? So I wanna dive into that as a solution. Now, if we think about where we are with accounts, we've really got two key identity providers we often think about. For on-premises, we always think about this idea of, well, I have my Active Directory. So we have our Active Directory Domain Services. We normally just call it Active Directory. And there are great solutions to help maintain the health of the accounts that we have in there. For example, I can think about, well, there's cloud technologies, but there are things like Defender. And with Defender, what I can do is there's signals on these domain controllers, on the DNS, on the other solutions, and those signals can be sent to this cloud service, which is a, a very light agent, and then for example, Defender for Identity takes those signals and looks for anomalous behavior. Hey, there's a golden ticket, a pass the hash. So we have ways to secure those credentials in our Active Directory domain services. Well then obviously we have our Azure Active Directory. So then I can think about, okay, well now I've got my Azure AD solution. And once again, there are lots of solutions on how I can think about protecting the identities. Yes, there's things like identity protection, which is looking for signs of risk behavior for the user, for the workload identities, like service principles, individual sessions, are there things happening? So it's looking for those signals. I have ways to do just in time elevation with privilege identity management. So I only have the permissions I need when I need them. Obviously it's conditional access. Again, looking at signals, including signals from things like identity protection, my location, uh, the device I'm on, is it compliant, is it healthy, before it lets me have authorization to use a certain type of resource. So for all of our different accounts in these different identity providers, we have fantastic solutions, that's great. And then we have the machines themselves. So if we think about the machines we have in our environment, we have a number of different options here. And especially in this world of Azure AD, our desktops more and more, they align to this Azure AD world. But we can think about, okay, well I have machines, and those machines may be purely aligned to our Active Directory domain services. Now these could obviously be desktops. That's my attempt at a desktop. It could be a server. And obviously our servers, they're gonna be more and more aligned with our on-prem. And the point is for these machines, they join. They join our Active Directory. And by doing that join, they have device accounts in this directory. So all my desktops, again, my servers, they have accounts in this directory. More and more now though, we think about, especially for our desktop machines, well, our desktop machines, why would I bother joining my regular active directory? They're from anywhere. I want modern device management. I don't need line of sight to a domain controller. Well, I'll just join them to my Azure AD. And then there are ones that kind of sit in the middle. So for the ones that sit in the middle, we have this idea of hybrid. Now, again, I'm gonna draw a server, but Again, it could be a desktop as well. I can absolutely have desktops. I'll do a little desktop just for the sake of it. They could be hybrid. Now in the hybrid world, what's actually happening here is, well, what they're joining is the Active Directory. And then remember, in our Active Directory, there's a few different things going on. 
one of the things we have going on is we have this idea of Azure AD Connect. Now that could be Azure AD Connect, the traditional engine that we run on some Windows OS. And what that is doing is it's synchronizing our objects. And that includes a synchronization of device objects. So now when I have Azure AD Connect enabled and I've turned on that device sync, it's now synchronizing the device object as well. And I have this idea of a service connection point. So I publish in the configuration of my forest this SCP. So now what also happens is these devices not only join my Active Directory, they also will go and register. So I'll do a little dotted line that way. They'll register with the Azure AD. So when we think of these devices, these are hybrid. So they've got a foot in both of the doors. So the key point here is if I'm hybrid, yes, I have my account here. I have a device object, but I also have a device object over here as well. And obviously if I'm a cloud only, cloud only, I have my device object there. So we have these different options available to us. I can be AD joined, I can be Azure AD joined, or I can be hybrid where I'm AD joined, but it also synchronizes my device object over to Azure AD. And because there's this service connection point that tells my machine, hey, look, this is the Azure AD you should be part of, go and register there as well. I get this hybrid benefit. I'm known to both places. Now I do want to point out a very important point when I'm talking about this hybrid functionality and I'm talking about, for example, this Azure AD join. Join is the key word for my cloud only devices. When we talk later on about our options, in this cloud world, we are talking about join. If I have my own PC, my personal PC at home, and I've registered it with my company's Azure AD, so I can use applications, I get bits of their device management, or I've done the old workplace join, this functionality is not going to work. If I'm in a cloud only world, and I've just done an Azure AD registration or workplace join, I cannot use this solution, which is gonna make sense if you think about it, because we're gonna deal with the local admin password if it's a corporate owned device, which are all of these scenarios, I'm joined to Azure AD, I'm joined to AD, or I'm hybrid, so I'm joined to AD and the Azure AD, it's gonna be a corporate device. My primary use is work. So I'm good with the local administrator password being known to one of these two entities. But if it was my personal device, I am just registered so I can use Outlook, I probably don't want my company managing my local admin password. So it's important to really understand that in terms of what this functionality is gonna do. So if I am a cloud only, I have to be joined to the Azure AD to use this. And for most companies today, yes, we have these three states, more and more, you're in one of these two. You're in a hybrid or your Azure AD for your devices. Very few of them today will only be AD joined. Obviously your domain controllers are not supported to be hybrid, most of your other machines are probably hybrid. And so when we talk about the solutions, I'm really gonna focus on this idea of the Azure AD actually driving the solution. Okay, so with all that said, my end result is ordinarily day to day, what am I using? Well, I'm using these accounts. If I'm over here, I'm AD joined, I'm hybrid, I'm authenticating with my account in my AD. If I'm Azure AD joined, I'm authenticating with the account in Azure AD, but that account probably still syncs, unless it's a cloud only, from AD anyway. So I have these nice central sets of accounts that have all these great solutions to monitor the health of them. However, we do still have that pain point. Yes, we have these nice cloud accounts up here, 
But on every single one of these machines, there's still that security accounts manager database. So on all of these machines, I have this SAM. And within that, at minimum, lots of strange accounts. The key part is I have an administrator account. I have that all powerful local administrator. Now that local administrator account has no permissions in these cloud or my AD domain services identity world, but it has every permission on my local machine. And if you consider, so if there's some malware, if there's some attack happens, well, if it can get access to that administrator account and is all powerful, it can then look at what's going on. So if I'm logged on to this machine with a cloud account, it can go and harvest things. It can try and get the credentials, get the tickets, get the tokens and do bad things. And that's how it can step up its permissions to then try and get a domain credential and then a domain administrator. So although this is local, it could see everything. And so we have this administrator account, which obviously has a password. And this is the pain point. How do I maintain this password on all of these different machines? Generally, we're not gonna use it because they're using these accounts that live up here. But if there's a scenario where there's a problem on the machine, there's a network issue, there's some device driver not working, something's broken, and I can't authenticate with my identity providers, well, I need to use this account. So I have to maintain that. Now, I could use the same password for every machine. Well, then if it's compromised, it's compromised on every machine. I can make it totally random gibberish that no one knows, but then see previous point. When there is a scenario when I need to use it, I'm a bit stuck. So I really want the ability to have this password, maintain its hygiene by rotating it periodically, have the ability to fetch the password if I do need it, and then maybe after I fetch it, rotate it after some grace period. So I've done the task I want, 24 hours later it rotates it to a brand new one. So again, I have to go and look at it to get all of the information. And potentially even, I want the ability for different people to be able to get passwords for different sets of machines. Hey, I have some scope of administration just for these machines. I should be able to fetch the password for all of them. So we need a solution. And this is not exactly a spoiler alert. Since the talk is on Windows Labs, well, that's gonna be my solution. So our solution is Windows Laps, the local administrator password solution. That is gonna cure all of my problems. Now when we think about what this is gonna do, it's gonna do that management of these local passwords. It's going to store it, it's gonna tell it to get rotated, it's gonna give me control and permissions on who can fetch it. If it is used, hey, we need to rotate it again because now it's been used, we want to do something different. And it's gonna store it in one of these identity stores. It's either gonna store it as, as an extended schema, if I'm using Active Directory domain services, or I just enable this on Azure AD, and then it's gonna work there. So it's gonna store it up, and obviously it's encrypted, it's gonna store it up in one of those identity solutions. Now, which one I can use, well, it depends on which of these scenarios I'm in. So if I think about where can I store this local password? So where can I have that local admin password stored? And it's very logical. Um, if I am joined to Active Directory only, like if I'm, I'm only here, and it's pretty obvious I can only store it in Active Directory domain services. So if I'm in this scenario, then my storage of my password is gonna be in Active Directory domain services. If I'm Azure AD joined, obviously, 
Well, then I'm going to store it up here in Azure AD. That's very obvious as well. What if I'm hybrid? When hybrid, I, I do have the choice. I could, because remember, I've got a device object in both. I have a device object in AD, and I have a device object in Azure AD. The preferred solution is absolutely Azure AD. So if I'm hybrid, I really want to think about that way for the storage. Could I do this? Yes. That is certainly possible. But our goal ideally is to not use the storage in the Active Directory domain services. So I'm going to put a little frowny face on this one. It's not that it doesn't work. It works absolutely fine. It's just I would prefer to have one solution. And so while you could do that, um, do this instead. That's the preferred approach. So if I'm hybrid, if I'm Azure AD joined, that's going to go for the option of storing and doing the management um, from Azure AD. But the management, actually, I'm flexible on that. The way I want to store it is ideally in Azure Active Directory. If I'm only AD joined, hey, I'm going to store it in Active Directory. But we have those choices. Azure AD is going to keep the last three passwords for that local administrator account. Now, you might say, why bother? Why store more than one? And it comes down to the point of, if I have a machine, what if I had a system restore? And I had to roll the machine back to a previous point in time. Well, that previous point in time, maybe a week ago, the password rotated since then. So it doesn't just store the last password, it's going to store the last three for me. Even if I'm in this hybrid world, if I'm using Azure AD, I have to make no changes to my Active Directory domain services. I don't have to extend the schema. I don't have to uh, do these special commands to set permissions. None of that is required. It's only if I want to store in AD, there's a set of steps I have to go through to add this new schema attribute to device objects. There's some permissions I need to add so devices can go and write to that attribute. I don't need to do any of that. When I'm using this hybrid and I'm writing to Azure AD, my client is going to get a special device only token, which is how it's going to authenticate to Azure AD. It then talks to a registration service to update and store that credential. Um, and again, it's only going to work in this scenario if it's joined. It does not work for Azure AD registered, does not work for that workplace join. Okay. So this is the preferred approach. And that's what I'm going to cover in this talk, therefore. The documentation is great, and it's really not that different. It's just for most organizations, it's going to be a neater scenario to just use the Azure AD. And note, there was a legacy lap solution. This completely replaces. We're, we're not even going to worry about that anymore. But I will touch on, at the end, what would be required if you're already using that. OK. Sounds great. What do I need? How do I get this lap solution for my environment? So what it's supported on is Windows 10. I think it's the, the H2 versions and Windows 11. And then from Windows Server, it's 2019 and 2022. But here's the really, really important part. For all of these, I must have installed the April 2023 update. It is this update that adds the components natively into these operating systems that powers laps. If I don't have this update, none of this is going to work on that machine. It is this update that adds, for example, the group policy template that would enable me to push the settings using group policy. It is this update on my Active Directory users and computers that will add a lapse tab when I look at a device object. But this is what's adding components, DLL or services to all of these our operating systems to enable lapse to work. So that's where it works. What do I have to buy? Normally, I always have to buy something. You actually don't have to buy anything. It's a completely free solution. It's natively, now just going to be part of these operating systems. And even if I want to store 
in Azure AD, I don't need a P1 license. I can do this completely for free. Now, I'm gonna to have to push policy. Um, I can push policy using group policy objects for these hybrid and AD joined. I can use Intune, obviously. Now, if I'm purely a cloud Azure AD joined, I'm probably using Intune or another MDM solution. And there is a new um, CSP to push with define the settings for laps. So I could obviously use Intune, in which case I have to pay for an Intune license or a third party MDM. But I can also, there are ways to just locally set these requirements. If I wanted to use things like conditional access for when someone's gonna go and get and use this role, maybe elevate up to PIM, well, conditional access is a P1 feature, PIM is a P2 feature. Uh, maybe one of these administrative units, which I'm gonna talk about later on, to restrict which machines can I fetch the passwords for. Well, again, that's then a P1 for the person administrating that administrative unit. So there are licenses that may apply if I want certain functionality, but for the base just feature, no. This is secure for everyone. I can use this without any additional licenses at all. Okay, how do I get it? So there's a few steps, and, it, and when I say a few steps, I literally mean there is a few steps to actually enable this thing. And again, I'm focusing on the Azure AD scenario. If I'm using Active Directory Domain Services, there's one attribute I have to add, so I run this schema extension command, and then I have to have the machines have to have permissions to write into it. And that's really about it, but there is a few things. In the Azure AD world, all I have to do is say, I want to enable laps. That's it. I have to turn on laps. And I guess we should jump over and actually see that. So if we go and look for a second, so here I am in my entry world. If I look at my devices and look at my device settings and scroll down, enable Azure AD local administrator password solution. And surprisingly, not, I have to set it to yes. That's it, that's my preparation for it. That is the only thing I have to do to get this thing up and running. So it is really, really super simple. But now I have to obviously be able to tell the machines, what are you doing? Because remember, I have to tell it where it was gonna send its password to. Now, obviously, if it's Azure AD joined, it can only send it to Azure AD because it has no line of sight to write to Active Directory. But if it's hybrid, I can write my password to Azure AD or AD. I've said it which one I want. So I have to apply a policy to the machine. Now, I have two ways of doing that. I already mentioned them. So I'll think about from the cloud perspective, I need an MDM solution. Now I'm gonna say Intune, just because I'm in a, a Microsoft kind of focus, but it's an MDM solution. And I'm gonna define a lapse policy. And I'm gonna apply it. So I'm gonna apply the policy. Now the key point here is this could be used in a number of actual scenarios. So I can cover obviously my cloud joined, but I can also cover the hybrid. If I had hybrid desktops, for example, I can manage them with group policy, with configuration manager, uh, with Intune. So I have a choice here. So this is about applying the policy. If I'm Active Directory domain services, well then I have to create a lapse group policy object. It doesn't have to be only laps, I could add it to an existing one, but there's an administrative template for laps. And then I apply that. Now its scope is always obviously gonna be the AD joined, but it could also cover hybrid. So this is applying the settings to tell it to write my password somewhere. Now remember where it writes to 
is separate from who sets the policy. And what I mean by that is, I might be using that group policy object to configure my hybrid machines. Because maybe it's a server. My server gets its policy from group policy objects. So the configuration of laps is gonna come from my Active Directory group policy object, but its configuration of laps can absolutely say, store your password in Azure AD. So don't think these are a one-to-one. -one. Just because I set the policy with one technology, i.e. coming from Active Directory, in this hybrid scenario, yes, I might configure my servers using group policy, but in that group policy object, I can tell it to configure the machine to store my password in Azure AD. And that's kind of a, a key point around these. So I have one thing defining the policy and the settings, but where it actually chooses to write to can be completely different. And that's the key part. So obviously I have the idea of the policy application, but then where it stores is gonna depend on what the policy is telling it to do. So let's actually have a look at those. So if we jump over, now I'm, I'm gonna start with the Intune world. So in the Intune world, if I go to my endpoint security and I go to account protection, I've created a lapse profile. Now obviously, for this to work, my machines have to be managed by Intune, otherwise it's just gonna ignore this policy. I've included all devices, and really the things that matter here are the settings. I can click edit quick so we see it all. And notice, I tell it, where do I want to back up the password to? So I've told it to back up to Azure AD only. I could have said though, back up to Active Directory only. So in this scenario where potentially maybe the machine was hybrid, it was managed by Intune, like a desktop, but I actually wanted it to write to AD. So it works in both ways. What drives the policy is configuring the machine, where the machine stores the password. Either policy engine can tell it to write to any of the two options. And it can only write to one. I cannot have it write to Azure AD and AD. It's always, I pick one of them where I want it to write to. So I tell it where I want it to store it. I'm saying, hey, I want to store in Azure AD. I set a password age. So the whole point here is, once I get past this password age, I set it to 90, I think the default is 30. It will rotate it. It will create a new one and store the updated one. By default, it's gonna back up the well-known SID. Even if I've renamed it, it doesn't matter. It's still gonna back it up. So notice it says, even if renamed. So it doesn't matter if I've changed it to local admin or something else other than administrator, the SID doesn't change when I do a rename. So by default, it's gonna back up the well-known SID. However, if I maybe as part of my environment totally disable the local administrator account and I add my own local administrator account, I can override it. I can say what that administrator account name is <clears throat> that it should protect. I then set my password complexity. Hey, how complex do I want that local administrator password to be? And I can also then set a password length. So I've set it to super complex and 18 characters. That will make total sense. These are just, okay, what do you want that local password to look like? But then, what happens after the authentication? So what this means is someone has gone and fetched the password using our solution, and they've used it. And this is the really, really important point about this. It doesn't matter if I've go and looked at the password in Azure AD or AD, <clears throat> doesn't, doesn't, change anything if I've just viewed it. But if I actually then go and log on, if I authenticate using the password that I fetched for that local administrator account, then this action would kick in. So what this is saying is, hey, if someone actually uses that authentication, so post that authentication, 
What I'm saying is reset the password. So it's going to roll the password, log off that account, and then after the grace period, it's actually going to reset completely. And so the grace period in my case is 24 hours. So if they go and get the password, they authenticate with it, 24 hours later, it's going to roll the password. And that's it. That's the policy. And then on the machine, if I go and look at my devices, and let's look one that's actually Azure AD joined, we'll see the lapse profile. And I can see in my case, it's succeeded. So it has applied it to that machine. Now while I'm looking at the machines, let's jump over. So now let's think about the Active Directory scenario. Now obviously, do remember in that Intune scenario, it has to see the policy. I can always go and force it from the machine. If I look at the MDM management and click Sync, I can make that policy come down and not have to wait for the normal one. If I'm using Active Directory to push the settings, well then, as normal, I've created a group policy object and I've just linked it. In this case, I've done it at the top level of my Active Directory, but maybe there's an OU I want to target. And then the settings themselves are just under the administrative templates, system, and laps. And there's a whole bunch of settings. However, if I'm writing to Azure AD, I think half of them don't even apply. If you look at my configuration, I've only set three. And they're the same three we set for Intune. Configure the password backup directory, the password settings, and the post authentication options. So configure the password backup directory. Well, sure enough, where do I want to store it? I'm saying I want to store it in Azure Active Directory. Totally logical. When I think about the password settings, well, it's the same settings. What's my complexity? What's my password length? And how many days? So the same settings I set in Intune. And then exactly the same again, what are my post authentication? Hey, after a 24 hour grace period, I want you to reset the password. So I'm doing exactly the same things. So the point here is really just how do I apply the different settings in the environment? So in this case, I've defined them both using Intune, so that would target all of the machines being managed via MDM. So my Azure AD joined, maybe some of my hybrid, my desktops, that I've chose to push the configuration, maybe off of Configuration Manager, Group Policy, more to the MDM path. But I also want to define settings for, in my case, my hybrid machines, using Group Policy. My servers are not getting any configuration from MDM. So for my servers, remember they're hybrid joined, so they're AD joined, so they get Group Policy objects, which is telling them, hey, I want you to go and store it in Azure AD. Obviously, telling it to write to Azure AD for AD only joint is not going to work because they don't know anything about Azure AD. So if I did have machines that were AD only, maybe my domain controllers, I want to back up the DSRM, that directory services with store mode password, well, they'd have to write to AD. Um, so maybe I'd have a different group policy object that I targeted the domain controllers OU for just to tell them, hey, you write to AD, everyone else, I want you to write to Azure AD. And that's, that's, that's it. I mean, that's the configuration. What it actually does behind the scenes, actually, if we jump back over for a second, we could go and look at the machine just to have a, a little peek at actually what it's doing. Let's close that down. So in terms of the machine, so if my machine is managed via cursor back. If my machine is managed by our Intune, well, it's going to write it to my HKEY local machine software Microsoft policies laps registry area. And you can see all the settings. So backup directory a value of one means Azure AD. I can see my password age 90 days complexity four was that 
most complex option. 18 characters passwords. Hey, what actions am I applying? We roll the password, kick them out after 24 hours. So I can just see all of those settings have been written into the registry. So that's the area used for Intune. If I'm using group policy, group policy writes to a different area. It writes to HK local machine software, Microsoft Windows current version policies, in this case laps. But I see exactly the same settings. Hey, I want you to write to Azure AD. Well, that's answer one. 90 days, very complex, 18 characters, reset role after 24 hours. So they're exactly the same values, they're just stored in different locations depending on what is actually configuring the policy. And this is documented, the documentation is actually fantastic. And notice it's telling me those same locations I just said for the MDM solution for group policy. If you're experimenting, or maybe you just wanna set these manually, you can also use local configuration area. So I could do this locally as well. So I do have choices, and this documentation will all be in the link below. And if you ever wanna go and look at this, well, if I wanna look at what's happening, just crack open your event viewer, and in your event viewer, if you just go to your applications and services, Microsoft Windows, Laps, Operational, you can see everything it's doing. So let's do a refresh. You'll see it kind of kick in every hour to go and say, should I be doing something? But I can see, hey, Laps processing with the policy succeeded. I can see all of the detail right there. So it's very easy to actually go and look and um, solve if I am facing any kind of problem. Okay, great, that's, that, that's it, that's the scope. Now I know I've talked for a long time as I always do, my bad, but I didn't do very much. Hey, I enabled a setting and I created a policy with four things in it and I'm done. Again, I did have to make sure I'm running the April 2023 update, which has just come out. So today, in your scope of devices, they may not have that all yet, but within a month, hopefully shorter, all your machines will have it. And you're done. Well, now what? Password's up here. So I've done this change. I'm now writing the password. So now as part of my device object, what LAPS has done is store that local admin password. It's now this encrypted attribute added onto the device object. And you have a whole bunch of these. So you have a whole bunch of these devices now in your Azure AD. Again, there's, there's servers as well, loads and loads of different devices, all with this password next to it. So they've all got this password. Now something's happened. Now something's happened and I actually need to be able to use it and get that. So now I've got the scenario where I need my administrator, I don't know what color my administrator is gonna be. We'll make them pretty angry, they're fed up. So now I've got my admin and I need to be able to read the decrypted password. Then there's actually some different permissions. There's permissions where I can go and see the attributes but I can't read the decrypted password. And then there's permission to specifically read the password. There's this device local credentials password read permission that lets me actually get the password. Now there's three roles that have that. As you would fully expect, the global admin, the Intune, administrator, and there's also this cloud device admin. Now I could also create a custom role. 
Now today the portal doesn't show it as a custom role, but I could create it using a template file, a command line, but that's what I would require. If we were to go and quickly look for a second, if I go and look at Entra, and I look at my roles, and let's just pick one of those. Let's look at the Cloud Device Administrator and look at the description. If I search the page for device local, if I type correctly, there we go. We can see it has Microsoft.directory slash device local credentials password reads. That is the permission required to get that encrypted password. And Again, we'll see that with the Intune, we'll see that with the Global Administrator. Um, if we look at the Intune Administrator, we'll see exactly the same. Permission is there, and Global Admin obviously has it as well. So all of those people with that role can go and get the password. So what does that look like? How, how do I get the password? Well. If I go to all devices in Entra, or I could use the Azure AD portal, local administrator password, select it. It will show me all of the device objects that have a local administrator password. From here, show it to me. Are you really sure you wanna show it? Yep, there it is. This friendly handy dandy password, because of that hideous complexity in 18 characters I set, there it is. I can just copy it to my clipboard and I'm good to go. Easy. If I'm using Intune, then once again from Intune, if I just go and look at my devices, pick the same machine, local admin password, show it. Same blade, it's just using the blade from Entra. There it is. There are other ways to get this as well. Um, I'm not uniquely stuck to this. There's also a reset lapse password commandlet I could use. In fact, let's just look at the docs quick. It goes through them all. <clears throat> so here we go. I can use the reset lapse password commandlet. I'm obviously, sorry, actually this is about the resetting. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. So those are the ways I can go and fetch that password. Then I would just authenticate with it. Super easy. Now, remember, what if I actually now wanted to proactively rotate it? Um, remember what I said is normally it's gonna do it every 90 days or after I've actually authenticated with it, if I've set that action to roll it, 24 hours, whatever the grace period was, it's gonna roll it. What about if I want a false roll right now? Well, I can do that as well. And that's what I jumped ahead to. But I can fetch the password using PowerShell. I can use other API calls. There are other ways to fetch it. But here, rotate. So I can force a rotation. So I'm gonna force a rotation because I've been sitting here showing the local admin password multiple times, which is probably a pretty poor idea. So I can actually go and rotate it. Now again, I can view it as many times as I want. It will not trigger any kind of action. It's only actually if I go and use it, will it make it go and roll. But what I would see is, and this is all logged. So if I was to go and look at, for example, the logs on a device, if I was to just go and look at the machine, um, if I was to go and look at my activity log related to Azure AD, I will see the fact that, hey, I've actually gone and read the attribute. So I can see when people go and view these things. So I, I do have full insight into, let's look at my audit logs. So if I look at device registration, service. Notice it shows me recovered local cr credential on a particular device, who did it. 
So there is, from where did they do it from? So there's full logs of all of those actions. So even though I've not used it, there is still a log written of, hey, recovered device local administrator password. It's still written to the audit log of Azure Active Directory, even though I didn't use it. On the machine itself, because I've told it to roll it, what I should see, it's normally been about five minutes because it obviously has to check in and, and find out, hey, I need to do something. But we can come back to this in a minute. I don't know if it's uh, done it yet. So it, it hasn't, but we'll come back. But what we'll see is it will go and roll the password because I've told it to. So we'll, we'll come back to this. And that's it. I mean, that's how easy this thing is to use. What if I don't want certain people to be able to re get the password for all machines? What if I want certain people to be able to do it for a subset? So what's the mechanism we have in Azure AD when I want to perform something on a subset of objects, be it users or devices? Well, the solution we leverage is administrative units. So what I would do is I would create an administrative unit. So to be an administrative, administrative unit, I need an Azure AD P1 license. So now what I would do is I would add the devices that I want a certain user or set of users to be able to get the passwords for, I would add them to that administrative unit. And then what I can do is I've got another admin, but this is maybe more a um, business unit level admin or a location level admin, for example. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them this role, for example, the cloud device admin role, only at the scope of the administrative unit. The end result of that will mean when they want to read the, um, the local passwords, they can only read for those machines. That's all they're going to have permission for. So it's only those ones. So administrative units will let me do exactly that. So if we jump over for a second, and I configured this. So if I go to my roles and admins area of Entra, and I go to administrative units, I created one called Gotham Devices. And what I added, I didn't add any users, I added one device, my SAV Work VM. So that administrative unit has a set of devices in it. And then what I did is at the administrative unit level, I gave the cloud device administrator role to Batman. Sorry, that's a secret, to Bruce Wayne. So Bruce Wayne has cloud device administrator role at the administrative unit. The administrative unit only has that device in it. So now if I was authenticated as Bruce Wayne, and if he's trying to keep it a secret, he really has picked a terrible um, avatar up there in the corner. But Bruce Wayne now can go and look at all devices. Notice I don't see the local administrator password option. That, that sucks. I can go and look at a machine, but I still don't see a local admin password option. But the machine that was in my administrative unit, I do see a local administrator password option for. And I could now go and show it. And actually notice it's different. That is not the same one we had before. So my guess is if we now actually went back and looked at the machine and refreshed, we have some new logs, which we do. We have a whole bunch of new logs and one of these logs is, hey, we updated it with a new local admin password. So we can see that Intune where we forced the role of it 
has actually taken effect. And now because I've shown it again in the video, I'm gonna tell it to rotate it again. Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Hopefully you get the idea. So the key point now is that yes, I can have a role at the Azure AD tenant level. Again, I could create a custom role with that um, device local um, read password, or I can put machines into administrative units and give someone that cloud device admin role just at the administrative unit level, and then they can only read the passwords for those machines. So that's gonna be a really nice way. Imagine I had like locations and I had local location administrators. Hey, you're probably gonna do this already. Put those devices in a location administrative unit, and then you give people permissions just on that administrative unit, so they can only fetch those passwords. So that's really gonna bring all of this together. Now I did mention there's that legacy solution. If you're using the legacy solution today, once you enable the new lapse policy, it will actually disable the old stuff anyway. It will stop using it, it can only write to one. However, if I am applying the new policy, I should go and disable the old group policy objects just for cleanliness. If I don't disable the old tools, the legacy solution isn't gonna work anyway, but don't leave it there. Go and disable the old group policy object you have. Because again, it can only send the local password to one solution. There's only one source of truth in all of this. And uh, that's it. Hopefully, as you saw, again, I went into a huge amount of detail, but it's so easy to leverage this solution. There's really no excuse. There's no downside with getting this up and running. Most of you are gonna go, this is the direction you're gonna wanna go. So I'm gonna go and enable that one option. And then, hey, for my Intune or other MDM, I'm gonna create a policy. For the hybrid machines that use group policy objects, I'm gonna create the group policy object. I have to get the April 2023 update rolled out, and then I'm done. If I want to be more granular, then I'm gonna make sure I have those administrative units. But remember, administrative units are so powerful anyway. If we think in the old AD world, we had organizational units and I could do delegation at certain scopes, administrative units give me that for Azure AD, so I should be using them anyway. But especially in this case, if I want someone to only be able to get the passwords for certain machines, hey, we stick them in an administrative unit, we give this person a scope of that admin unit for that cloud device admin role, and that's all they can go and fetch. So that was it. Totally free solution if I want it to be free. Again, I can bolt on licensing if I wanna take advantage of, of great features like conditional access and, and PIM and admin units for the administrators. But everyone could just go and turn this on today. That was it. As always, I hope this was useful. Till next video, take care.